Take seven. Yay. Oh my gosh. I've tried to record. This is this is attempt number seven. That's where we're at. Anyway. Uh, long time no see, right? It's been a couple of weeks. Um, I have had all sorts of recording issues this afternoon trying to get this done for you, and my family is probably wondering why I'm still outside. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully I can sum it all up for you pretty quickly. Just kidding. Okay. Welcome back. Long time no see, guys. My name is Karen. This is Southern Ketovore. I've been absent for two weeks. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I really am. Um, and I also am sorry in advance because I'm going to be like itchy twitchy the whole time because of bugs. This is just this nature. South Carolina. I'm telling you. It's like everything is itchy. And I swear I sprayed my cutter this time, too. And it's still like I'm just itchy now. I think I... I just took one. <sighs> anyway, let me fill y'all in on what's happening. Uh, it's been a rough couple of weeks, um, and I'm sorry for being absent. Um, it's just been a lot going on personally, um, just with some stress and uh, some fatigue um, as a result of what's been going on so um, I apologize I know I'm, I'm typically a little better about getting a couple of videos a week out to you guys and I haven't had any in two weeks so I am very very sorry um, several of you I really appreciate you reaching out to me I've, I've gotten several messages and comments from people asking what's going on where I'm at and I do truly appreciate everybody's concern and reaching out to me and um, obviously it makes me feel really good that y'all miss me. So, um, I am very, very sorry for being largely absent, uh, even over on my Instagram. I know I have not been consistent with posting over there either. So, um, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, but just to fill you in, uh, first of all, this is my like ninth or 10th attempt at recording this video this afternoon. Like something keeps happening each time, like the tripod fell, um, my neighbor started up his lawnmower. My husband started calling me in the middle of it, asking where I was when he's like right on the opposite side of this wall. Um, so a little bit of everything. <laughs> so this is my ninth attempt. If I sound jaded and frustrated, it's because I keep trying. Uh, so that's first and foremost. Uh, secondly, uh, clearly you guys are super interested in my chicken chaffle recipe, so I have it on my agenda tomorrow to knock this out. Uh, to explain myself there, I went to record the other day to do my chicken chaffle video, and my little dash waffle iron that I've been using is missing a bunch of the nonstick coating, so it went into the garbage. Uh, obviously I don't want to be eating nonstick coating and at some point apparently I have because a lot of it is missing. Um, so I've got to go and pick up a new dash to be able to film my video. I will say, I mean, for like eight bucks from Target, I've had it for like a year and a half. So I probably got my money's worth. I feel okay about it, but I do need to go and get another one. Uh, so I'm doing that tomorrow so that I can go ahead and get that chicken chaffle video recorded for you guys because uh, that definitely is something it seems like y'all are all really interested in. So that will be up this weekend. Um, but to explain my absence, uh, you know, your girl's been a little overwhelmed. All right. Um, emotionally and mentally, I have been exhausted. Uh, it's been a, a variety of things. Um, this started two weeks ago when my husband got sick with the thing. And, um, you know, when people get sick with the thing, sometimes they're fine. Sometimes they get pretty sick. Uh, he was pretty sick. He had some, some pretty serious flu-like symptoms. Obviously not a, a serious or critical condition type issue, um, but just overall, like, out for the count for a week. Um, which, of course, was 
stressful in and of itself with just kind of the added responsibility of your partner being down. Um, additionally, I have done so much cleaning and laundry and sanitizing and scrubbing and isolating him uh, to avoid any of the rest of us catching it, uh, which luckily, no one did. It's because of my wonderful cleaning skills. Uh, but, you know, that added just physical labor and stress of that. Um, additionally, he and I do work together, and with him being absent from work for about a week, added stress and responsibilities and hours and everything at work, and I've been sleeping like crap. So, I've been tired and like super pooped and just have not had the time or the energy or the patience to sit down and try and record. So I apologize for that. Um, most recently this week, I've, I have started getting my sleep schedule kind of back to normal and I'm finally starting to feel rested. Um, however, I am feeling a little emotionally drained. Uh, just by what's going on in the world. Um, there's a lot happening, you know, and without getting political or getting any side or particular interest involved, you know, sometimes that's just the way it is. You know, sometimes there are things going on in the world that some of us that are empaths really take very personally and it can weigh on us. And so that, that's kind of worn your girl down a little bit. I'm just, I'm just worn out. So... Today's the first day that I'm kind of feeling a little bit more back to normal. I'm feeling pretty rested. I'm feeling a renewed sense of motivation and determination to kind of keep pushing forward. So I hope that the two weeks is uh, absence enough and that y'all are ready to deal with me again. Uh, but it brings me, after that, I'm sorry, like six minute introduction, uh, to a brief purpose of this video today, uh, which is your emotions and the rationalizing and the excuses that we make when our emotions are tested. Uh, so to clarify, we all go through stuff, right? Every single one of us, whether it's good or bad, it can be awful. It can be a sickness. It can be a death in the family. It can be uh, losing a job. It can be a stressful move. It can be what's going on in the world. It could be any number of negative things, but it can also be any number of positive things. Say you're planning a wedding, say you're expecting a baby, say you're being promoted or you have won the lottery and you're trying to decide what color Hellcat to buy Karen. Sublime green or black on black, by the way, would be my first choice if you win the lottery. Uh, but it, it could be any number of things, right, uh, that are affecting you emotionally. Good, bad, what have you. How do you proceed when you're feeling that kind of way? So many of us are on a health journey. Uh, it can be for any number of reasons, right? It could be something simple. It could be weight loss. It could be to get your blood sugar and type 2 diabetes under control. It could be to get your blood pressure under control. It could be to improve your GI function. It could be to improve an, a neurological disorder. It could be that you just feel better eating this way or whatever it may be, right? Whatever, it, insert your goals and your reason and your purpose for following whatever health journey you're following. Um, and this could translate to other things too, like budgets and that kind of stuff. Um, but whatever your journey is, it can very often be affected by your emotions and what's going on around you and what situations you're facing. And it is so easy to rationalize deviating from your plan, right? I've done it, you've done it, right? We, we've all at some point or another screwed up and There is a, there's a mosquito stalking this eyeball. I don't know why. That's my left eye. Like, why? Wait, see it? It's just... Ugh. You guys, I'm not built for nature. I'm not. I'm paying to move to, like, Canada. Do they have mosquitoes in Canada? No? It's 
seriously. I can't, I can't with the mosquitoes. Anyway, okay, so emotionally we are affected and emotionally we tend to slip or fall during those times, whether it's a celebratory or a, a, an unfortunate, difficult time. So what do we do in those times? First of all, if you have deviated, if you have slipped, if you have screwed up, whether it is a meal, a candy bar, or it's been a week, or it's been four months, or it's been a year and a half, whatever it is, if you have deviated, it's okay. What's done is done. You can't look behind you and mourn that loss of time or lack of discipline and when you screwed up. Do not beat yourself up. Y'all, we, we are all guilty of this. We've all done it. Don't beat yourself up. Don't treat yourself like you're worthless or like you're a failure. It is very human for us to screw up. We all do it. We all self-sabotage sometimes. Stop right now where you're at and forgive yourself. It's okay. You screwed up moving forward starting right now starting in the morning I'm starting over this is this is it I am a priority and I am going to be as disciplined as I can be to make myself a priority first and foremost like seriously I hate every time that I see someone posting messaging me whatever about how they have failed you haven't failed it's just part of human nature we all screw up and it's okay you're totally all right. Just dust yourself off and move forward. That is the first thing. The second thing, if you are finding yourself in one of these situations and you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling fatigued, you're feeling excited, you're feeling any one of these things and you're tempted to deviate, I want you to think of a few different methods. Have a few methods up your sleeve and be ready for distractions to stop you from deviating. Now, some people use affirmations. They'll use, you know, they'll have their, their goal outfit hanging up in the closet and maybe a picture of them when they were at their goal weight or, you know, maybe it will be, um, you know, any, any number of, of vacation photo of, or a, a picture of a cruise ship that you're going on in a few months that's your goal or a, a wedding invitation, whatever it is that might have you encouraged and motivated. But a lot of us need more than that. And we need tools to be able to keep ourselves from falling so hard. So I'm gonna share with you my three that I personally use. Uh, these are the things that work for me. You may need to tweak them a little bit to accommodate yourself. But these are the, the things that I have found tend to work for me. So whether I am at home or at work, my number one, that I always, always, always go to first. It is my first line of defense when I am feeling emotional, whether I am having a terrible day at work or I am having a terrible day at home and I stub my toe on a door jam and it feels like everything is against me or whether I feel like the entire world is falling to pieces and I'm just feeling super defeated. My number one line of defense is to make an extremely ritualistic cup of coffee. It is so simple and next, to absolutely free. All right. Uh, if I'm at work, I use my Keurig. I make a super hot cup of coffee and I sit and I savor, right? If I am at home and make a cup of coffee, I might make it a bulletproof coffee with a little bit of butter and heavy cream. And I, I take the time to enjoy the flavor, to enjoy the heat. If it's way too hot and it nearly burns my tongue. I will still sit there and really try and savor the drinking temperature, the texture of the coffee, the flavors that I taste in the coffee, and it, it is enough to distract me. Now you can use this in many, many other ways. It could be a hot tea, an herbal tea. It can be anything other than coffee. It can be an herbal tea or a flavored fruity tea or, you know, a, a bone broth or something, whatever it might be that can be a physical thing that you can consume that is your, your moment to yourself. 
Uh, so, so coffee is my number one. My number two is a ridiculously hot shower. Um, for some people, this might be drawing a nice warm bath with some candles and the lights off and a glass of wine. It might be a, a dip in your pool. It might be sitting in the hot tub and relaxing. For me, I go into my walk-in shower. I keep the bathroom light off and I turn it as hot as I can bear without it blistering my skin. All right. And I just sit in there and I like, it's, it's an escape. I might turn on a little music, but it is a moment for me to really defrag and try and disconnect from whatever it is that's bothering me. And in that moment, I will think to myself, like, I know I'm emotional right now and I want to eat my feelings and I'm not feeling good, but I'm, if I'm still feeling bad when I get out of the shower, then maybe I'll go and do these things. But it usually is, is completely effective. Just having 15, 20 minutes of just scalding hot shower and no lights and just trying to escape it and let it go. Number three, and I do this nearly every day as just a ritualistic type of thing, but if things are extra stressful, I add to it. And that is taking a walk with my best buddy. Uh, so this can be your dog, this can be your spouse, this can be a friend, it can be your child. For me, I always walk with my husband every single afternoon. Um, most days our kids come with us too. Uh, as you guys know, I have two teenagers, they're 14 and 19, and we all walk the neighborhood as a family. And we talk trash to each other the entire time and joke around and play. And it is a time when we are very, very together and we forget about all the rest. So it's a bonus because we have a little bit of physical activity too. Uh, but the biggest thing is that we, when we are together, we find a way to chat and hang out and defrag and forget about what else is happening and bring a little bit of relaxation that might take our mind off of the other things that are happening. So like I said, that, that might translate to something different. That could be, you, you guys can pick any number of things uh, to have, but I suggest you have three. Try to have three so that if one doesn't work, you can move on to the second one. If the second one doesn't work, you can move on to the third. So a cup of coffee or tea. Um, if, if you're bougie about wine or bourbon, I mean, pour a really nice glass and try and make some tasting notes and uh, and really dig deep to find some, some flavors in those types of things. Um, you can spend your time making a really beautiful meal for yourself and, and pamper yourself with a beautiful meal. You can go take your dog to the dark dog park. You can go to the beach. You can go to a yoga class, whatever it is. I would suggest having a few things up your sleeve as I mean, guys, this is, this is life. Every single day, sometimes we have some challenges and it, it is helpful to have a few things readily available as a, a method to distract you from your cravings and your indulgences and those times when you're feeling just emotionally and physically wrecked and you want to deviate. Have them up your sleeve as a fail safe. Okay. And like I said, again, if you've messed up, it's okay. All right. It's all right. We're all human. I've done it. You've done it. Everybody's done it. It's okay. Just move along. It's going to be fine. Just start over. It could be the very next meal. It could be tomorrow morning. It could be Monday. I'm okay with the Monday thing. Just start over. Don't beat yourself up. It's all good. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to cut it now that it's like 18 minutes long, uh, but I've missed y'all and look for the chicken chopple video this weekend to be up. Yeah. All right. Till then, catch me on Instagram over at Southern Keto War and I'll see you next time. Love you, Nina. Oh my God, you guys. I'm being stalked by like a single mosquito that I cannot swat away and it has been so troublesome this entire time.
Like, I can't tell you how many clips I've had to edit out from like a whole lot of slotting and stuff. Like one tried to land in my eyeball earlier. Am I even still be in there? I don't know. But good lord. I'm so itchy. You can hear it too. Like all the nature. So much nature. Yeah. Cicadas, crickets, all the things. And it's kind of peaceful. Yeah. For real. Oh, and a reminder. Obviously, none of this should be taken as medical advice. Just sharing my own personal experience, guys. I hope it helps. Alright, see you next time. Love you, Nick. Bye bye! Uh, and you, you guys, your girl has got to do her hair this weekend. Good lord. Man, oh man. Forgive my roots. It'll be blonde again this weekend. Okay, bye-bye.